Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ram Studio Comics. Welcome back. So in today's video, I want to show you another brush. This time I'm going to show you the brush in action by, you know, screen grabbing the iPad Pro as I do this. But this is a fun brush that I've uh, created and I'm going to be making a lot of these because I got to admit the brush creation process inside of Procreate is one of the best. It has some of the best controls and I'm going to explain these in a series of videos as I go. I'm actually filming a Skillshare class right now where I teach how to create some of these brushes. So you're welcome to check that out. Once it goes live, I'll make sure to let everybody know. But basically one of the brushes that I tend to create because I just feel like it saves so much time is none other than a hairbrush. Imagine that, brush, hair, brush, you know. But anyways, it's it's a great brush because what happens is it saves you a lot of time. Uh, I actually started using a brush like this after uh, working with a buddy, Chris Scalf, that does a lot of creature design. He actually showed me how he used the spatter brush inside of Photoshop to make this effect. Well, then over time, I just kept modifying it and modifying it in various softwares. I've made one for uh, Manga Studio, Clip Studio Paint, and I would say that this one's probably the best that I've made so far. So what happens is, remember you can do a three finger, uh, sometimes you can do a three finger swipe and it'll erase the uh, layer. So what happens is this particular brush will do a nice ease in and ease out. So you get the nice little points at the end. Um, so once you get the flow of the hair going, then you just keep building onto that. You know, you're obviously going to want to do a lot of overlapping strokes and things like that. Kind of get the design of it going. I'll usually draw it first and then I'll use this brush to paint over top. You also want to scale this brush up and down. And after you start to overlap a lot of this uh, pattern, you really start to see this come together. So another way to do this is to actually, um, you know, you can create the color as you go as well. But I'll show you once I get enough of this in place, I'll show you how I bring out the highlights. So I'm already starting to picture that this edge right here, this part right here is going to be a highlight, right? So what I'm going to do is darken kind of before and after that. And you know, keep in mind you can also erase with a brush like this. But the other thing that you can do is you can start to build in with layers, or the brushes themselves actually have blending modes now, uh, which I don't think they originally did. I think they added this, but or maybe I just never noted, noticed it. But there's the blending mode. So what you can do is you can set this to like lighten, add, pick a highlight color, and you probably need a little bit more of this in place for it to stand out. But you see it's kind of doing like a dodge effect, so you know, kind of like dodge and burn in uh, Photoshop. So see how it's getting those little bits of highlight right there that I want to see. And remember too that you can really just duplicate the brush and you can save some of these settings. So if you want one that's a highlight brush, save that setting, duplicate that brush. It's real easy to do. You just take the brush itself, go back to the initial uh, setting here, swipe over, duplicate, you know, maybe change this name it you know hairbrush highlights <laughs> all, all kinds of double entendres or whatever those things are called go into here you know set this one back to maybe multiply or darken whatever normal it doesn't really matter but because the brush itself already has some translucency where it does that for you but the neat thing about brushes is, is that they can save a tremendous amount of time that's really the whole purpose of them i mean there's there's lots of things you can do with brushes, you know, texturize your backgrounds. This this could actually make a pretty neat uh, background texture as well. But instead of trying to paint all these little strands in and get all this kind of rich detail, rich texture in place, this uh, really expedites the process. So just kind of keep painting it over again, adjust the size. Now I need to actually make this brush a little bit bigger. Remember that you can adjust your size controls in here as well. Uh, where is it at? Is it overall size now that's giving us the size of the taper that's why it says taper there um, just kind of re-familiarizing myself I use so many different programs that now that's for the Apple pencil general maybe size limits it's set to max sometimes when you add a little bit of spacing here then you go back to here yeah see what happened there so I adjusted the spacing Oops. to just a smidge and then went back over to general and now look at the range huge amount of range 
So now if I go back to this, this brush can be massive now. See the difference? So just keep that in mind. It's a little, little bit of a trick there for you. I don't know if it's a trick or nothing, but it's just something that you gotta pay attention to. That's all tricks are really, is paying attention. Okay, so, you know, you see there's there's a little bit to it. When we start adding color and stuff like this, this will really start to pop, and then we don't want all of it to be in focus. So what I generally do is I'll take the smudge brush, maybe like a soft brush, bump that up, and I'll just blend some of this stuff back. Because like I said, you don't want it all in tight focus and, and extreme clarity. Uh, you know, the subtlety is, is what really helps sell a lot of paintwork. So you just want to blend some of that back here and there and kind of keep repeating that process. But hopefully you see there that you start getting a pretty nice hair effect. This works for fuzzy creatures and gnarly, hairy arms and whatever you got to do. Um, so just keep in mind that brushes like this can be fantastic. I'll go ahead and share this one with you. Um, I'm also going to create another one. Let's see if I've already got it here and I'll share it as well. This grass uh, brush. And all this one is, let me show you the, the uh, source code. It's not really a source code, source image. I just drew these little grass blades. I didn't even draw them that well. But then what happens is by the time you adjust all your settings, and I'll just cycle through here so you can copy the settings, pause the video, if you want to really learn the settings that I'm using for this particular type of brush. Uh, and if you want more of this in more detail, you can, you know, check out the class that I'm going to create. But we're going to create a few different types of brushes. But see how just with that brush and that pattern and that overlapping kind of paint style texturizing effect. You, know, you can see right there, and I should probably use some greens and yellows for that just to show you. Let's grab a green start off light and light to dark I guess you can really paint either way with this but see how it just it's got that little stamping effect and you can get some variation with this and again see how I'm maxed out at my size there so let's try that little trick again we go over to uh, spacing well we've already got some spacing there so let's go over to here our size limits weren't um, as large as they could have been so we'll bump that right up now it's massive. Let's scale that down over here. About there, I guess. Let's just play around with it. You know, you're going to do some of the foreground. Remember, too, that you're going to use layers. Uh, you can use the blending modes of the layers, in, you know, right here, to combine effects, too. So you could add a layer, set this one to maybe multiply, uh, even grab a little bit darker. Uh, green you always kind of play with the colors as you go and then just you know things are generally darker in the foreground so kind of throw in some darker areas there make sure it's a bit patchy so it doesn't look too repetitive and since it's on another layer you can blend parts of that back as well and then you can come back with a highlight and do the edges so as you start to build all this paint stuff together it starts to make more sense but hopefully you can see that just these two types of brushes alone can be huge time savers. Like I said, I'll make sure there's a link in the description box below so you can check them out. And if you want to know more about brushes and Procreate and things like that, let me know. And let me know, be specific in the comments. What would you like to know? What would you like to see in future videos? And do you like this format of recording? All that stuff is great food for thought as I move forward on the videos that I create for you. So I appreciate you tuning in and watching. As always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and I will talk to you soon.